Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, welcome back to Diego Knows. I am Diego and I have reviewed every single episode of Sex in the City. That's right, I did, I did that. I reviewed every goddamn episode, all 94 of them, of Sex in the City. I watched that shit. And I also reviewed that piece of shit abortion called And Just Like Crap. I reviewed that one as well. The videos are all on here. Uh, if you want to see what I thought about that piece of shit, okay? Uh, but I loved Sex and the City. I thought the show was great. I was the only straight guy I knew that was watching the show. I was in my 20s when the show first came out. I was living in a big city, living in Chicago. I was young, you know. I was dating, going to school, working at night. I worked with a lot of actors, models, musicians, comedians. You know, we, we did that whole lifestyle that these girls were doing. We were just a lot younger than they were. But we were doing the same shit they were doing, you know. <clears throat> yes, we had a lot of sex, too. Okay, um, uh, all the hot girls I knew were watching the show, so I thought I, you know, I'd watch it too to find out what's going on. I already had HBO because I was watching Sopranos, uh, so I thought I watched Sex and City and I got hooked. I thought the show was great. The only thing I didn't like is how they treated the guys in the show. Uh, other than that, I think the show was hilarious. I love the characters. Uh, I love their situations. You know, I thought it was, it was really good uh, to get a little peek at the dating life of a woman for a change. That was kind of new and different. I'd seen chick flicks before, obviously, but those were all crap. All right, uh, this show, you get to see them every week, you know, find out what's going on in their lives, okay? So it was a little bit different, all right? So I liked the show. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, not realistic at all. It was fake. Fake as shit, okay? Uh, but I knew that going in, okay? So I was, I was already expecting this to not be realistic dating situations, okay? And it's not. It's not. Not at all, okay? The show's popular, but the shit, it was bullshit, okay? Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so what I decided to do is I decided I would review all the episodes of Sex and the City and give you a straight man's point of view. That's what I do here, okay? I tell you the honest God truth from a straight man's point of view, okay? So if you're easily offended, if your feelings get hurt easily, if you're a snowflake, get the fuck out right now. I will not censor myself, okay? I'm going to tell you the truth, which is something that uh, unfortunately this show did not do, okay? But I'm going to tell you the truth from a straight guy's point of view. Yeah, from a guy's point of view. That's right. Not a gay guy's point of view, not one of your girlfriends, not your mom, none of that shit. A real man's point of view about these women, these situations, uh, these dating, all, 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 all the aspects of dating from a straight guy's point of view, okay? Which is the point of view that you never got when you watch this show. When you watch this movie originally, you never got our point of view. Nope. We had to keep quiet. Well, we're not quiet anymore. Okay, I'm leading the charge here, and I'm going to tell you what guys really think about this shit, about these hoes, because that's what they are, hoes, okay? <laughs> it's true. It's true. The real question you need to ask yourself is, can you handle it? <laughs> can you handle it? I don't think you can, okay? But we're, we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay, so I already reviewed all the episodes, now we're in the movies, okay? This is part two. Uh, of the first Sex and the City movie that I'm reviewing here. Now, where I left off last time, we basically got a recap of the entire show. Okay, Samantha's living in L.A. Uh, with her boyfriend, Smith Jarrett, the actor, okay, who used to be her boy toy, and she, she used to be a sugar mama. But now he's actually contributing to the Samantha Jones Fund. She's his manager. He's a successful actor now. So he's putting money into her bank account now as opposed to the other way around, the way it was before on the show. Okay, uh, Miranda's still living in Brooklyn with her family, her her, uh, her, her unhappy family, because she's an unhappy bitch, okay, uh, with her husband and their housekeeper and her son, okay, Brady, who's a, who's a little kid now, all right, uh, Charlotte and, they, um, and her husband, Henry, they went to China and kidnapped a little Asian, okay, they didn't kidnap her, okay, <laughs> but they, they acquired, uh, you know, they, they adopted her from a fucking parking lot, okay, <laughs> Actually, we don't know. They hired a service and they got a fucking kid from China. Okay. You make of that what you will. Okay. They got a little girl from China. Okay. They named her Lily and now they're there. She's living there with them. And of course the fucking dogs are there too. Fucking Liz Taylor and her fucking puppies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Liz Taylor. Yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. I ain't going to make a joke this time. Okay. I made it last time. All right, so yes, yeah, so that's going on. Of course, Carrie and Big are, are uh, looking for a place to live together. Okay, because I guess they're going back and forth between her apartment and his apartment. And by that, I mean she's hanging out at his apartment all the fucking time. Because this place is a hell of a lot fucking nicer than hers. All right, <clears throat> uh, so they're looking for a place together, of course. Uh, and by together, I mean that he's going to pay for it all. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, they need to find a, a place for them to live together. So they find this beautiful penthouse in Manhattan. And, of course, she actually has the audacity to say, can we afford this? And by that, she means, can you afford this place big? Uh, because I sure as fuck can't afford uh, to live in a place like this. 
Okay, so you're gonna have to fucking pay for it. Okay, because you love me, you better fucking pay for it. Or else, okay, is basically what it comes down to, okay? No, I shouldn't say that, but this is a straight man's point of view. This is not your gay best friend's point of view. This is a straight man's point of view. And that's exactly how he took it, okay? Now, he wants to make her happy. It's pretty obvious, okay? He wants to make her happy. He loves Carrie. I don't know for sure why he loves her that much. Uh, like I said, just because he's getting old and he's getting lonely. That's the only thing I can think about. He, he was never that way. He was not introduced to us on the show in that way. He was introduced to us as a player. This guy was dating models left and right, okay? These guys dating movie stars, <clears throat> okay? This guy was fucking pulling in tens, all right? And then he gave it all up for Carrie because he felt lonely? That just, that, that made no sense to me. It really did. I mean, he's having three ways with his first wife, okay? This guy has a high sexual market value. I don't know why he gave all that up just to be with Carrie. I think it's, maybe it's because, like, she made some laugh. He likes talking to her. Okay, but that was never built up. He just showed up in her life at the, at the very end uh, of, of, of the last season, and she took him right back because uh, her, uh, her Russian ballet dancer fucking slash artist uh, uh, Euro trash fucking boyfriend uh, uh, fucking laid the slap down on her. And so, of course, she had to dump him, right? Uh, so, anyway, yeah. So, um, so yeah, he's going to pay for everything because he's big. And, that's, of course, he's going to pay for it. He's rich. Okay, he's rich. He's single. He's got no kids. You know? Um, he's handsome. You know, he's charming. You know, he pays for He's very generous. He pays for everything. Uh, yeah, so, of course, he can't do better than fucking Carrie, right? Miss fucking 40-year-old fucking Pastor Prime. Yeah, of course not. No, it's, it's, it's not believable. This show, but then this show is lollipop land. Okay, I'm trying to inject some reality into into this lollipop land universe that is called Sex and the City. Okay, this unrealistic fucking uh, uh lollipop land that we're living in here. Whenever we watch this show and this movie. Okay, so that's going on here. Okay, um, she doesn't like the closet; it's too small. But otherwise, everything else is fucking perfect. He tells her, "I can build you. I can build you a bigger closet, honey." Don't worry about it. Welcome home. Can we afford this? Don't worry. I got it. Of course you got it, motherfucker. You're going to pay for everything. You always pay for everything. You think Carrie's ever going to fucking stick her hand in her purse and pay for a goddamn fucking thing? Fuck no. That would never happen. Okay. So that's going on. <clears throat> so, of course, uh, what does Carrie do? She brags to her girlfriends about it. Okay, so she's bragging to uh, Miranda and Charlotte. They're walking down the street together, taking up the whole fucking sidewalk in their outfits, you know, acting like in their summer dresses, acting like they're the fucking hottest shit in the whole fucking world. And she's talking to them about how the fucking, the, uh, the penthouse, like how big said, I got it. Like he said it just like that. Like he was picking up a, a check at a restaurant. You know, what well, basically he is, he's always got to pick up the check with you fucking Carrie. You ain't paying for a goddamn fucking thing. <clears throat> okay. And then Miranda tells them, like, hey, you know what, Carrie, if he buys the apartment, then he owns it. You're still keeping your place, right? I just want to make sure that you're being smart here. Carrie's like, I know, and I love you for it. But we'll figure it out later. Stop worrying about me. Just be jealous of my Manhattan penthouse. Miranda's like, yes, yes, yes. You live in real estate heaven, and I live in Brooklyn. And Charlotte's like, hey, you know, they're saying Brooklyn is the new Manhattan. Uh, whoever said that uh, is from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You, you see what I mean? The elitism here, okay? The narcissism here, okay? These women are just bragging to each other about who's got the better of fucking apartment, Okay? Like, what the fuck, man? I mean, this is just like, oh, God. No. Why are these women attractive again? Like, like, is this something that a man would be attracted to? Women that all they do is talk about who's got the better of this, who's got the better of that? You know? Like, no, no, we don't give a shit. This isn't, this isn't fucking high value for a man, for a woman like this. Okay, when a guy, if a guy with, with, with means like this, because that's the only kind of guy that exists on the show, but if a guy with means like this is, is looking for in a woman, it's not going to be this. It's going to be for something else, okay? A guy doesn't want to be a fucking, a girl's fucking ATM, okay? He'll do it, but that he doesn't want to lead with that because he knows that's all you're going to look at him as, is a fucking ATM. And that's all these women are looking, that's all Carrie is really, and definitely Charlotte, are looking at, the, at their boyfriends, their husbands, 
is a fucking ATM. Charlotte's problems are all about herself and what she wants, okay? It's never about her husband. She doesn't give two shits about her husband's problems. As long as he fucking pays the bills and keeps the fucking lights on, she's fucking fine, okay? But, but his problems don't fucking matter. We never see his problems. Same thing with Big. As long as Big is taking Carrie out to eat every fucking night, paying for everything, cooking her fucking food, because Carrie doesn't fucking cook. Big does the fucking cooking in his own fucking apartment. And he fucking works. Carrie just writes every whatever she fucking feels like it now. <laughs> what is so attractive about these women that multimillionaires would give up their bachelorhood for this? Why? What? She's too old to give them kids. So what the fuck? <clears throat> exactly. What? Oh, well, my wife is a, is a famous author. She writes about all the guys that she fucked. And her friends have fucked. Yeah, maybe in some circles I'll get you a latte. But it doesn't mean shit. It's not something a guy wants to fucking brag about. Yeah, my wife's the biggest fucking slut in New York. Yeah, have you read her column? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> not realistic. <clears throat> okay? Not realistic. <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> Have you read her book? Where she talks about all those guys with those big cocks that she was fucking riding up and down? Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, see, I told you you heard of her. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what the fuck kind of world is this? This is such bullshit. <laughs> you, want to, you want to know why he's going to stand you up at the altar? This is why. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> All right, moving right along. <clears throat> All right. Um... <laughs> okay, <clears throat> sorry. Um... <clears throat> okay, so anyway, the girls are walking down the street. Carrie's bragging about her, her, uh, her new fucking her real estate heaven uh, penthouse. And then they meet Samantha. I guess Samantha just got there from uh, L.A. So they all hook up. Ah! You know, the typical estrogen shit. Like, ah! You know, that they always fucking do, okay? How was the flight? Oh, it was fabulous. Because, you know, Samantha creams over that word fabulous. Uh, so she uses it every fucking third sentence. Unfucking believable. All right, anyway, so they're there for an auction. Okay, there's an auction going on. Some fucking useless fucking bitch. I don't know who the fuck it is. I guess she was a model. And her boyfriend was a billionaire. <clears throat> and uh, he bought her all these gifts, all this jewelry, and all sorts of fucking shit. And then one day she came home from fucking her boyfriend probably, okay, because this guy is obviously a lot older than her, okay? She's like, if you're a model, that means you're in your 20, early 20s, you know, late teens, early 20s. So this guy's a billionaire and he's already been married three times. So I'm guessing he's like in his 40s or 50s, okay? Uh, so, you know, she comes home one day and he locked her out of the fucking mansion that they lived in. And so this is her way of getting revenge for breaking up the, her heart, uh, she's going to sell all, this, all the gifts that he bought her. She's going to sell it at an auction. <clears throat> okay? And she's probably going to make a good fucking 10, 20 million dollars off of all this shit. This, remember, this is a billionaire that bought her all this shit. And they were together for like 10 years. Okay? <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, she, she's going to come out of here like a, fucking, like, like a fucking bank robber. Okay? But we're supposed to feel sorry for her. Uh, not because this guy's a billionaire and bought her fucking 10 million dollars worth of shit that she's going to turn into 20 million dollars. No! He's an asshole for breaking her heart! She loved it! <laughs> and now she's going to pay for it! He's going to pay for what he did to her! Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we're supposed to go with. That's the logic here on this in this movie. Uh, have I mentioned that this movie's not as good as the show? Well, I'll mention it now. Okay, no, probably not the last time either. But yeah, that's the logic you're supposed to go with. So you're supposed to sympathize with her. We don't even meet her. We hear about her. We see a picture of her. Okay, we don't even meet this girl. That's why I don't fucking remember her name. Uh, but yeah, she's selling everything at the auction. All the gifts that this billionaire bought her. Because uh, she's the real victim here. Not him. Not him. Okay, uh, he's a billionaire. Okay, uh, he, she's the victim. She's the victim here, okay? Uh, so she needs to get her revenge by selling all the shit that he gave her, right? And making a shitload of fucking money. Let me tell you something, dude. I'd go through a lot of breakups if I got fucking $10 million out of it, okay? Absolutely. 
fucking lootly. Yes. Yes, I would I would totally be happy with that breakup. You fucking bitch. Oh, uh, <clears throat> did I tell you that gay guys wrote this movie? Well, they did. They did. In case you couldn't tell. All right. <clears throat> so there they are the auction, okay? Uh, for some poor billionaire's model girlfriend who found herself out on the street one day. Uh, so now she's selling all the gifts uh, that he gave her, which is total bullshit, okay? Uh, it's an ultimate breakup revenge. That's what they call it. Okay, Samantha wants this diamond flower ring. She saw it in the catalog. That's the reason she flew to New York to go to this auction so she could buy this fucking diamond ring, uh, flower ring that she saw, okay? And she told Smith about it when she saw it in the catalog. Uh, she described it as, it's the essence of me. One of a kind and filled with fire. It's Fabulous. <sighs> yes, yes, Miranda. I mean, not Miranda. Uh, Samantha is one of a kind. Uh, she's a uh, above middle aged, semi attractive woman that thinks she's a fucking ten. Yes, you're right. Those are those are one in a million, aren't they? <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Samantha. I really do. Okay, she's the leader of that quartet. But you can tell by watching this movie that uh, uh, Kim Cattrall is not really uh, in sync with the other women, uh, especially Sarah Jessica Parker. I notice there's a lot of scenes that Kim Cattrall is not in the shot. Like she's off like in the corner and they're, they're, the camera's going back and forth. So obviously the scenes that she's in, she was not in the same room when they filmed them. Probably for personal reasons, okay? Um, but you always see uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and you always see Cynthia Nixon and you always see a Kristen Davis together and scenes together all the time. They're obviously in the same shot, but not necessarily Samantha, not Kim Cattrall. She's off in the corner and the, and the camera's got to move to her to get her point of view and then move back to the three girls. You see that a lot in this movie. So obviously there was trouble in paradise when this movie came out. You can tell. You can just kind of see it, you know? <clears throat> you can see it in their performances too that, that Kim Cattrall and, and Serge Tavari don't really like each other. Okay, I never noticed it before because we didn't know about this feud back then when this movie came out. We didn't know about it when the show was popular, okay? They would never talk about it when the show was popular because there's nothing that, they can't allow that to hurt the show. Okay, this is the shit that we heard about later. <clears throat> Much later. <clears throat> I think it was when Kim Cattrall's um, brother died and Sarah Jessica Parker on, on Instagram, uh, or it might have been Twitter, she, she posted a, a, a condolence. And then uh, Kim Cattrall just went off on her. Like, don't pretend to be my friend. You don't give a shit about my brother or my family. You were never my fucking friend. You know, <laughs> kind of shit. Like, she just went off. <laughs> Which is why she's not in the new uh, piece of shit and just like crap. Yes, there was a big feud going on. But we didn't know about it back then. We didn't know about it back but you can you can now, now that we know about it, you can kind of see it. Uh, in, in the movie. You can see it now in the performances, all right? They, they don't really seem that close. You got to remember, out of all of Carrie's friends, uh, Samantha is supposed to be her bestest friend, okay? That's her strength. That's her anchor, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, she bitches to fucking Miranda, and she brags to fucking Charlotte, but Samantha is the one she goes to for help, for support, for emotional strength, okay? That, that's who she goes to, okay? Uh, and you're just not seeing it here. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, the, the amount of narcissism in this movie is fucking through the roof, okay? Uh, someone on the phone, uh, however, uh, they're doing the auction and they're bidding for this for this ring, okay? Uh, Samantha's bidding. There's another woman who's on a phone, obviously talking to her client, and she's bidding too, and she's outbidding Samantha. So at 50 grand, Samantha says, that's it, I, I can't go any higher. 50, 50 grand is my limit. So, of course... Uh, the opponent bids 60 grand, and so they get they get the fucking ring, okay? So now Samantha's pissed off because she really wanted that fucking ring, all right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, she outbids her at 60 grand, you know, but 50 fucking grand is a lot of fucking money, okay? So don't tell me these, these women are poor, okay? No, who the fuck's got 50 grand lying around to buy a fucking ring with, okay? Not very many people, okay? Not very many people. All right, so no, this show does not represent your average uh, woman who's dating, okay? Not at all. Nowhere near at all. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So now they're in the bathroom for some more bathroom talk. And there's another girl there. Uh, some woman. She's Latina. Okay. And they're in the bathroom. They're all talking. And this woman, apparently, we don't know her name. But apparently she was friends uh, with the model that's auctioning all of her stuff. That, that, that hosted this auction. She's friends with her. She knows about her. 
She knows her personally, so she's telling her what happened, okay? Once again, we're supposed to feel sorry for this fucking gold digger, fucking 20-something-year-old woman uh, who fucking, uh, whose billionaire boyfriend broke up with her, and so now she has no choice but to sell her millions of dollars worth of fucking uh, jewelry, okay? We're supposed to feel sorry for her, because he broke her heart. Oh! You know, whatever. Okay, so boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, right? Okay, and she's telling her about this woman, Okay, like about how uh, heartbroken she was. You know, she goes, we all told her. We all told her not to get married. He's already been married three times. But she didn't listen. Nope, she didn't listen to poor, poor girl. <clears throat> no, no, nothing poor about this fucking auction. She came home one night and he changed the locks. She didn't even have anywhere to live. Ten years! She was a smart girl too, she was. Until she fell in love. And she looks at Carrie when she says that. Carrie's just like... You know. <laughs> of course, Carrie uh, sees this as a reflection of her own situation, you know. Plus what Miranda said about, hey, you know, Big buys that apartment for you. It's still his apartment, not yours. So yes. So now we're getting into fucking alimony. <clears throat> yes, exactly, okay? Or palimony, as they call it. That's my favorite word, palimony. <laughs> That's where the guy sues the wife. <laughs> he gets her fucking money out of the marriage. <laughs> I would never do that, though. No, I would never do that. I would never, I would never sue for palimony from an ex-wife. I would never do that for money. I would do it for lots of money. <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. It's ain't about me. <clears throat> All right. So anyway, so Carrie tells a big <clears throat> while he's cooking her fucking dinner, uh, and she's just sitting there doing nothing, uh, doing nothing. He's the one in the kitchen cooking food. She's she's not doing a goddamn thing uh, except thinking. She's thinking and she's complaining to Big. Okay, because that, that that's what she that, that's her job. Okay, so she tells Big that she wants to uh, sell her apartment. Because remember, she bought it from Aiden, remember? Uh, through the money that Charlotte gave her. Um, she wants to sell her apartment and put the money into the new penthouse. That way, she can be a, a co-owner of the penthouse. You see? Smart thinking. <clears throat> it actually is really smart, you know? Uh, and I'm glad Miranda mentioned that, okay? Uh, Big's like, uh, it is our place, okay? I bought it for us. I bought it for you. You know? Uh, and Carrie's like, uh, and that's amazing, but uh, you own it. So it's your place. <clears throat> We're not married. If we break up, I have no legal rights to this home that I built with you. Well, now, there, now if that isn't a fucking... Uh, if that isn't an argument for a fucking prenup, I don't know what the fuck is, okay? Uh, yeah, she's basically saying, like, you know, I'm going to be out on the street since you're paying for it. So either one or three choices here. Number one, um, you let me pay some of it so that I can own it all when we get divorced. Or two, you marry me and I'll get the whole fucking thing when we divorce. <laughs> or uh, three... <clears throat> um, what is the third option? I don't even know. There's no fucking third option. Yeah. She just fucking, no, no, the third option would be like, yeah, he buys it and she just lives there. And she fucking saves up her own money uh, and, and to get her own place if they, when they, when they break up. All right. <clears throat> so yes, yes, that would be the fucking thing. All right. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, cause she built, she built it, right? No, she didn't. Okay, Big's like, uh, do you do you want to get married? Now, there's some red flags right here that she just mentioned, but Big's going to be oblivious to that shit because all Big cares about is making her happy. That's his only goal in life is to make you happy, Carrie. Come on, kid. That's what I'm here to do, to give you orgasms, to take you out places to eat, and if we don't go out to eat, I'm going to cook you something to eat because I roll that way. Whatever you want, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. Just tell me right now. I'll buy it for you. You want a bigger closet? You got a bigger closet. 
Because that's all I fucking do is pay the fucking bills. I'm here for no other purpose than to make you happy. I know that's amazing, but you know what, Big? If only you would do this, 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 and this. That way I can just sit here and do nothing all day except turn food into shit. I think that's fair. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly where we are. <clears throat> all right. So anyway, Big's like, uh, he, he ignores all that shit and goes like, um, do you want to get married? Uh, I wouldn't mind being married to you. Would you mind being married to me? And she's like, no, no, I mean, not, not if it's with, if it's what you want. Uh, is it, is it? I want you, Carrie. So, okay. Really? That's it? We're getting married? Just, just, just give me a, a, a really big closet. <clears throat> Carrie, you just fucking won the lottery, okay? You just, you just won the fucking lottery. <clears throat> All right. You got this fucking rich guy to fucking marry you, which means you're going to fucking take everything he's got. And in about uh, 14 years, you're going to fucking take his life, too. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it's like... Did I mention that gay guys wrote this, this movie? Okay. No, no straight guys did not write this movie. They did not. Okay. Um, basically, Big has left himself open uh, to a lot of uh, potential problems. Not, not problems. Potential problems. Okay, in the future, okay. <clears throat> I'm hoping he's smart enough to, to do a prenup. I mean, like I said, he's been married twice already. And I'm pretty sure he paid a lot. I know he definitely did his first wife because he complained to Carrie about that. How uh, he was still going steady with a fucking alimony check every month. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, he should know better. And the fact that he just like casually agreed to marry her means he didn't think it through. Okay, he did not think it through. Uh, and, uh, it's going to bite him in the ass. It's going to bite Carrie in the ass too. <clears throat> these are not things that you just do very, uh, that are very subtle. Okay. These are things that take planning, preparation. You know, uh, you don't, you don't just fucking say, Hey, you want to get married? Yeah, fuck it, let's get married. Okay. They're not in Vegas. Okay. Uh, this is like, it's like a big deal, especially in fucking New York. Okay. Especially in those fucking no fault uh, divorce states like New York, like, like California, you know, like, fuck, it doesn't matter who cheated or what. Okay. Uh, she'll still take you for everything you got. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, and, and, and he should know better. He's been through this already. Twice. All right, <clears throat> so anyway. So, uh, of course, Carrie tells the girls over brunch. They're at some restaurant. It's just, like, Samantha doesn't live there, so it's just uh, Miranda and Charlotte, and they're having brunch together, and she casually mentions that, oh, you know, Big and I, we just, and you, you look at Charlotte's eyes. Charlotte's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, she's waiting for Carrie to fucking say it. <clears throat> okay, and she said, and, of course, she's like, <clears throat> We and Big were talking about your day, and you know, we just had your eyes going. Or maybe we should be honest. Yeah, exactly. Just like that, too. Just like that. Okay? Because the show, uh, this movie is obsessed with fucking food, and we always got to see the women talking with their fucking mouths full. Okay? Their fucking cum dumpsters are goddamn fucking chewing food all the fucking time they talk. It's fucking annoying as shit. Damn. Hey, you want, ladies, you want to know how to turn a guy off? Keep doing that. Are we just talking? Yeah. Nobody wants to fucking see that shit. <clears throat> God damn. It's every fucking episode they were doing this. <clears throat> I was talking with the fucking, chew your goddamn food and swallow it and then you fucking talk. God damn. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah, so she mentions the girls that Big and her are getting married, and Charlotte go, d does one of those, ah! you know, uh, type things. So, of course, the whole restaurant, like, <clears throat> like, what the fuck's happening, right? And Moran's like, oh, I think I'm deaf in my ear now. My ear is still ringing. <clears throat> okay, um, so she screams out loud, and then she stands, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. This woman is my friend. And she just got engaged to a man that she has been dating for 10 years. And she was fucking a 
other guys during that time. <clears throat> okay, well, I may have made up that last part, okay, but it's still true. All right. <laughs> you forgot. You forgot that he was married during some of that 10 years of dating, okay? To someone else. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. And she also had a boyfriend with someone else <laughs> while they were dating <laughs> in that 10 years. <laughs> no, I le left that, she left that part out of the fucking big speech she made. But it, it was enough to get everybody, hey, which is meta, obviously. It's the fucking audience that's watching the movie in the fucking theater like me. Uh, my girlfriend dragged me into the theater. I mean, I would have seen it without her, but I probably wouldn't have gone opening day like at the theater. I would have waited till it came on TV or I would have waited till it showed up on Blockbuster. Because we, Yeah, we had Blockbuster back then when this movie came out. Uh, that's when I would have watched it, okay? But uh, I was in a theater when this happened. And I was like, ah! All these fucking middle-aged women sitting by themselves eating their fucking popcorn. We're all like, ah! I'm so happy for her. You know, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so that's going on here. She announced it at the whole restaurant. Like, they give a fuck. All right. Charlotte's like, I'm sorry, everyone. Blah, blah, blah. You know, anyway. So the restaurant's all excited. <clears throat> okay. Later on, Carrie calls Samantha in LA. Uh, she's going through, I guess she's shopping or something. She's going through some, she's on her phone, looking at clothes like she always is. Because that's all they fucking do is go shopping on this goddamn show. Shopping and stuff in their fucking faces. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Carrie calls Samantha, who's in L.A., and tells her about her big decision. And Samantha's like, oh. And she's like, I've made a big decision, Samantha. And she's walking around like, oh, really? Finally, you're going to get Botox. It's about time. You're going to love it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, dude, I... Yeah, just ask fucking uh, Melanie Griffith about Botox. All right. And and um, what's her name? Fucking um, Meg Ryan. Yeah, that's Meg Ryan about Botox. Okay, anyway, so uh, her... Uh, and uh, and Courtney Cox. Okay, uh, so her uh, her office is uh, surrounded by magazine cover posters of Smith Jared everywhere. You know, all these different like entertainment magazine, TV guide. It's just posters of him in a different outfit. He's obviously, he's made it as a TV star. He's a famous TV celebrity now. Like a, like a fucking, uh, like what's, what the fuck's his name? The guy from fucking ER uh, or oh, Grey's Anatomy, like Dr. McDreamy. Like he's, he's one of those now. Okay. All those fucking assholes. Like a John Hamm. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, so that's going on. Okay. And she's his manager. It's called Samantha Jones Management now. Okay, and she's got this big wall-sized picture of fucking Smith Jared laying on a couch, you know, like this, you know, in her office. Yeah, right behind her desk. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous, okay? She's got a whole staff of people working there for her, uh, basically to boost his career. That's her full-time job. It's all, it's all focused around him and his acting career, you know? <clears throat> Which is good, I guess, in a sense. It's poetic justice, you know? She did fucking give him a career, so now he's paying her back for it, all right? Uh, so, um... <clears throat> All these different roles of his that he plays. Okay. Uh, Carrie's like, no Botox, Samantha. I'm getting married. And Samantha's like, uh, I don't believe in marriage. And uh, after Aiden, I thought that you didn't either. Okay. Uh, but Botox, uh, that's guaranteed to work. Okay. So I got to go now. Bye. It hangs up on her. And Carrie's just like, huh? My best friend hung up on me? You know. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, she gives it a minute or two, and then then uh, Samantha calls her back, calls Carrie back, and she she uh, and she tells her that she had hoped that uh, Carrie uh, would end up like her, okay, single for the rest of her life. <laughs> well, uh, yes, yes, Samantha, you are going to end up single for the rest of your life, but you're also going to end up alone, okay? You're going to end up alone, okay? Uh, because uh, when you fuck all those guys, many guys as you have. Okay, number one, you do not know how to pair bond anymore. You can't form an attachment to it to a man. Uh, you, you, you'll never know how to do that now because you've just you've, you've formed so many meaningless attachments that you don't know how to how to form a meaningful attachment to a man. Not even your boyfriend. Okay, and uh, you're also going to end up uh, alone uh, with nobody that gives a shit about you except your girlfriends. Okay, but unfortunately, your girlfriends already have people in their lives that they give a shit about. That theoretically they should give a shit about more. 
Uh, but because this is lollipop land and the show was written by gay guys, uh, lesbians, and feminists, no, they're going to care about their girlfriend more than their own fucking kids and their own fucking spouses, okay? So no, maybe Samantha won't end up alone, but a woman like Samantha in real life would end up alone, okay? Uh, cats. Cats or dogs, okay? And yes, we're going to see some of that in this movie too, okay? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so that's going on here, okay? Uh, she was hoping that Carrie would spend the rest of her life uh, being a uh, single, uh, not alone, because a big will be there for now anyway. Okay, uh, but, uh, you know, single, and, and uh, Carrie tell, asks Samantha to be her maid of honor. Okay, and Samantha's like, uh, uh, like the way you feel about Botox. That's how I feel about being a maid of honor. Okay? Uh, it's painful and unnecessary. Okay, so that's going on here. All right, meanwhile, uh, Charlotte, uh, Carrie, and Anthony, yes! Uh, Charlotte's gay best friend, Anthony, is there. Remember, he's a wedding planner. That's one of the jobs that he does. He does a lot of different jobs, but that's one of them. He planned uh, both of both of Charlotte's weddings. <laughs> okay? And uh, uh, that's her gift. That's Charlotte's gift to Carrie is that she's, she's given him Anthony uh, to plan her wedding. So they're, they're in their, her apartment going over all the shit that they want to do. Okay, they're going to come up with 75 guests. Okay? Not 76 like they wanted. He said 75 is a better number. That's what Anthony told her, okay? He wants a small wedding, 75 guests, okay? Uh, it's going to keep it plain and simple, okay? Uh, and she said, like, we still got to pick out your dress. And Carrie's like, oh, I already found the dress. I already picked it out. I already got it. They're like, well, let's see it. So she goes in her closet and pulls it out. It's basically a plain and very simple uh, white dress. It's a two-piece. It's got the skirt and the jacket, and that's it. It's like, it's like no big deal, okay? It's the kind of dress you'd wear to, like, to church or something, okay? But Carrie likes it because it's simple. Okay, it's plain and simple. Uh, they don't like it. They ask, oh, who, who's the who's the designer? Who is that? She's like, oh, I don't know. I bought it in a I, I bought it in a, in, a, in a vintage shop. You know, uh, uh, it's simple and classic. Okay, uh, this is what I should uh, marry big in. That's what I was thinking when I saw it. Okay, uh, there's no label, so I don't know who the designer is. And Anthony's like, the bride wore a dress by no one. <laughs> the invitations are fancier than the dress. And Carrie's like, I heard that. He's like. I wanted you to hear it. <laughs> Good old Anthony. Okay. All right. So that's going to end my review of part two of Sex and the City, the movie. I'll be back very shortly to give you part three. And we will continue on this escapade into bullshit fucking uh, estrogen lollipop land. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.